So this is the February 16th, 2021 meeting of the East Island Meadow Planning Board. Those in attendance are Peter Punderson, Ty Richards, John Torsha, George Kingston, myself, Russell Denver, the Director of Planning and Economic Development, Bethany Yao, and Rebecca Jones. So the first order of business is if there is, I need to ask whether there is anyone who might be recording in this meeting. If so, please raise your, your uh, Zoom hand so you can be identified and brought into the meeting. Hearing none, just let you know that we are being recorded for LCAT and that will play at a later date. So uh, the first item would be the approval of our last meeting minutes of February 2nd. Okay. Russ, okay. I'm, yes. I'm gonna interrupt you. I see Heather Cunningham is here with her hand raised. I just wanna confirm that she didn't raise her hand because she's recording. And if she is, okay. that, that you are able to note that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I'm not really sure how to do that except to bring her in. I, I'm, okay. Is she on the agenda for any reason? I don't. Really? I believe she may be in a butter to um, the Happy Acres subdivision. There appears to be several people in the audience okay. that are here for that, although it's not going to be heard this evening. All right. So I'm just going to say, ask you, Heather, if you are not recording, would you please just put, lower your hand for just a minute? Thank you. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. And, and so why don't we just clarify that? So Bethany, can, can you give the status of the Happy Acres subdivision? Absolutely. Um, so the public hearing had to be rescheduled to March 16th um, due to uh, an issue with the legal advertisement. So that public hearing will not be heard tonight. It will be heard on March 16th, which will is a the, Tuesday night. Will the abutters be re-notified? Yes. And when should they anticipate notification? Um, within the next two weeks. Okay. Thank you. So um, I believe we're back to um, approval of the February 2nd, 2021 meeting minutes. Uh, I'm not hearing any corrections, additions, or subtractions. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved, John. Do I have a second? I'll second, John. Any discussion? Hearing none. So by roll call, Mr. Punderson? I was not at the meeting. Okay, Mr. Richards? Yes. Mr. Torsha? Yes. Mr. Kingston? Yes. And I am a yes as well, so that passes. Mr. Richards, first item, please. Okay, site, site plan waiver, SPRW 2021-5, request for site plan waiver review waiver for Jelly on My Belly and Ultrasound Imaging Center at 604 North Main Street, Assessor's Parcel ID 1A-94-321, an existing structure on a 0.32 plus or minus acre site in the business zoning district. The applicant is Tom Costas, 55 Benedict Terrace, uh, Long Meadow, Mass. Is the petitioner here? Yep, hang on. Can you hear me? I can hear you, I can't see you. Okay, um, let me figure that out, here we go. There you go, perfect. Thank you. Good evening. So um, what we'd like to know is a little bit about the business, what it, what it does, what the hours of operation might be, number of employees, so just start from there if you could. Uh, yeah, so we are a ultrasound imaging center for pregnant women. Um, so we take pictures of the baby and provide that service for them. Right now, it's myself and one per diem person who works maybe one day a week. Um, we are open typically from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Okay. Uh, is this a new business? Are you relocating? I'm relocating from 310 North Main Street, East Long Meadow. I thought so. I thought the uh, I thought the name sounded very familiar. So <laughs> it's a great it's a great name, obviously. Yeah, thank so, you. Yeah. Uh, questions from the board for the petitioner. Hearing none, do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second, George. 
Okay, motion made and second to approve this item. All in favor by roll call, Mr. Punderson? Aye. Mr. Richards? Yes. Mr. Torsha? Yes. Mr. Kingston? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Congratulations and uh, best of luck on your move. Thank you, appreciate it. Take care. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Richards, next item, please. Okay, SPRW 2021-6, request for site plan review waiver for Lawrence Professional Cleaning, a home office and cleaning business at 22 Saver uh, Avenue, Assessor's Parcel ID 05-41-31, and an existing structure on a 0.23 plus or minus acre site in the residential B zoning district. The applicant is Lauren McDon McDonald, 22 Sa Savroy Avenue, East Long Meadow, Mass. So, hi Lauren, we don't see you and it looks like you're muted. Hi. Hi. How hi. are you? Good, <laughs> thank you. I don't know if you were just listening to the last petitioner, but so tell us a little something about your company, your hours of operation, whether you have employees, you know, where the work will be conducted, those type of things. Okay, um, so I work by myself. I don't have any employees. I work typically nine to four. Um, and I just do residential areas um, in East Long Meadow and surrounding towns. Okay. Um, are you gonna have storage of cleaning materials in the premises, any commercial vehicles? No. Okay. Okay. So essentially you're just going to be taking phone calls, doing the billing, that type of thing. Yes. Okay. Um, questions from the board? Yep. Okay. Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve? So move, George. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Motion, motion made and seconded. So by roll call, Mr. Punderson. Aye. Mr. Kingston. Aye. Victoria. Yes. Mr. Richards. Yes. And I am a yes as well. Best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Take care. Mr. Richards. Uh, now we have other business. Uh, vote on street acceptance recommendation to town council for Rustic Meadows subdivision, Rustic Meadows subdivision and Rustic Meadows lot one Silver Fox Lane. The applicant is CNM Builders LLC. 31 Hillcrest Circle, Westfield, Mass. So Bethany, um, is there anything that we should be aware of on this item? Sure, so at the last meeting, you uh, voted for a bond reduction. Um, the developer had also requested a uh, recommendation for street acceptance. DPW is all set with that. Um, we were waiting to see what the procedure would be for town council. It sounds like all they need from us is um, a vote of approval from the planning board and approval from DPW. And then it goes on to town council and they will handle it from there. Um, so DPW is all set with it. So now it comes down to uh, your approval. Any discussion? Any questions? Hearing none, do I vote to approve the street acceptance? Don't move. I'll second it. Motion made. Motion made and seconded. So by roll call, Mr. Richards. Yes. Mr. Torsha. Yes. Mr. Kingston. Yes. Mr. Punderson. Aye. And I'm a yes as well. Next item, Mr. Richards. Uh, the director's report. So I'm kind of, I'm gonna uh, just prompt uh, Bethany. So on Saturday, there was a visioning session relating to the master plan. Uh, I was in attendance. I know Pete was in attendance. I know George was in attendance. Um, um, I'm going to let Bethany kind of give us her take on it and what she, how she felt about it and the next steps. Sure. Thank you, Russ. Um, so we had this really amazing uh, community visioning session on Saturday morning. It was two hours. We had just over 60 people in attendance. Um, who stuck around for the whole two hours, which was great. Sometimes you lose people after a little bit. Um, we had a lot of good discussions, a lot of positive um, and encouraging feedback from the community. Um, encouraging for me because it was very similar and along the same lines as I'm trying to um, apply for grants and those types of projects that I'm envisioning for the future. So 
uh, it was encouraging for me as a, the planner to know that I'm headed in the right direction based on that feedback. Um, we talked about Isang Meadow's strengths and weaknesses, um, opportunities and um, challenges um, that we foresee in the future. So basically we've taken all that, um, the video recording, the chat recordings from the Zoom meeting, we are compiling it and we will have a overview of that information and kind of a recap at the next master plan steering committee meeting which um, i believe is next wednesday um, and we should have an agenda posted on the town website so if anybody wants to chime in or just tune in for that meeting they're more than welcome to so bethany i participated in the breakout session so will the each of the breakout session notes be kept for posterity there be yeah, with, so, with the public record yes yeah, so i um each discussion leader saved the chat so that chat is available um as a written record and um the video recording from breakout sessions i don't believe is recorded i don't think zoom has that option but the chat but, was so but the notes were we have that and then we had the padlet where the um it support person was entering uh the comments from the public okay pete george you want to add anything as participants from that from saturday i was, I was, encouraged, I, I was encouraged by what i heard but i couldn't join i i could not get my my audio to come on so i couldn't make any comments but um, i was kind of impressed as to the amount of people that actually do care about east lawn meadow and are, are involved in it i was the, the guy the young man who directed the meeting was absolutely fantastic i thought and I thought it was great. So great job, Bethany. And I mean, I was surprised. I thought it was, it was just great. So I was in, impressed with the participation um, that we got that many people and a bunch of people that I expected were there, but also a bunch of people I had never heard of before were there. And mm -hmm. that was both, that was really good. Um, a lot of the issues, I, I won't say that I was surprised by any of the issues that were brought up, but there was a good consensus about what the major issues are and uh that was encouraging uh so yeah i thought it was very very useful and will help validate the uh the plan that we come up with um i'll add the other thing i wanted to note tonight was i did submit the dlt um a request for the funding the technical assistance funding from pvpc for the housing production plan so I will let you know if and when we hear back from that. Um, we also expect to have a pretty full agenda for March 16th. Um, it seems like our site plan review applications and our special permits are catching up with us from COVID, which has been pretty quiet. So um, I will try to send those along as soon as we have them in. So those can all be reviewed in time for the meeting. Don, did you want to? Add something? Yeah, yeah, I, I would have loved to join. I, I'll have to take a look maybe. Well, you froze, John. <laughs> so while we're waiting for him to unfreeze. So um, I've been sending notes to Bethany about, um, and, and we're not going to begin a discussion about the actual item, but about happy acres. So there appears to be a great deal of interest in this uh, subdivision. And so I've asked Bethany, and I also spoke to Rebecca, about the possibility of us being a little proactive when we begin the meeting and begin to address that specific site. Yes. So uh, it used to be under 61A, uh, and apparently it was converted in fiscal year 2018. So I'm asking Bethany to prepare, maybe it's a PowerPoint, probably a PowerPoint. Okay, I have um, a short report that I've been adding to as I've been researching it, Okay. Uh, but I'm happy to put that into a PowerPoint. That's yeah, a so I, I would call on Bethany just to kind of explain, it was under 61A, now it's, you know, when did it get changed? Um, it's my understanding they've also gone in front of the Conservation Commission, so I'd like to know 
when it went in front of the Conservation Commission, what was the outcome? More importantly, who, you know, were abutters notified? I mean, I want to know so that we can maybe answer a number of questions that people have about the project up front rather than trying to answer them during the hearing on the matter. Sure. Am I, am I going in the right direction do people think? I, I think you are. One thing you should be aware of is that um, subdivision layout was filed for that many, many, many years ago and never followed up on. And so this is a reiteration of something that uh, has been, I think, in the landowner's mind for decades. Okay, and uh, George, just oh. move forward on it. George, is, the, is it the same plan as it was before? Because it's three cul-de-sacs right now. No, it's a different plan. Yeah. But um, there was a plan that was developed earlier. Uh, the, the issue back then was they had not gone to conservation. They had right. not taken into account the wetlands that are there, which are right. significant. Okay, so um, this new one is, is the new improved version but it's not totally brand new. It, it, it's something that has been sort of on the back burner forever. Right. Okay. But I, I, I guess I'd like to see the, the official action of the town with respect to this property so that we can answer people's questions about, well, how did we get to here? What, what has taken place and how does it now find itself in front of the planning board? So what public processes taken place I think would be important to be able to answer. So I, I remember at one time, and we're not debating anything, but at one time th and there was discussion about it being purchased by the town, I believe. Right, right. It, there was. Yeah, community preservation dollars, um, right. which apparently didn't go. I, I remember when I was on appropriations committee, there was a discussion about that uh, at one time as well. But okay, I wish chair was CPCC then and we um, the Brown property was offered and it seemed to be a much, much better, yeah. you know, cleaner deal. So we, we purchased the Brown property, which yeah. is just sat there. Yeah. So if there are if there are things that you would like to or you believe that it would be important for Bethany to um, present before we actually get into the details and some of the public uh, hearing aspect of this. Would you please let her know uh, sooner rather than later so she has enough time to kind of put this together. So, and are we meeting on uh, March 2nd, Bethany? Um, we could go over some housekeeping items, but at the moment I don't have anything um, scheduled for it as far as cases go. Okay. So I, I guess so, because this has been relatively short. So if, if there appears not to be any matters by the Friday before yep. Uh, yep. the second, how would the board feel about um, not having that meeting on, on March 2nd, if there's I'm, nothing in front of us? I, I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I'm very much in favor of not meeting when we don't need to meet. Okay. All right. I'd say that if anything comes up, we should have the meeting because we have a bit, a large meeting after that. We don't want to yep. dump it in there. So right. Right. Yep. something comes yep. up, we'll have the meeting. Yep. Okay. okay. All right. Bethany, Rebecca, anything else you guys want to add? No, nope, that was it. Now, John, you froze on us. Um, Am I back now? I'm sorry. Yeah. You started to say you, you wished you had, had the opportunity to go to the visioning session. And then you froze on us. Yes, I had a uh, virtual conference this weekend. But what I was kind of wondering was what were like some of the biggest takeaways for people uh, that, that weren't there, like some of the biggest issues that were brought up? I think one of the biggest issues in general is just a lack of connections between the people who really want to take action and um, better the community and just can't find that connection point to um, make that a real change or that was my biggest takeaway was there's a lot of people who want to be active members of the community and are in their small circles. Um, it's just a matter of connecting those people 
um, to create a larger chain reaction. If I could jump in, um, the biggest, in addition to that, what Bethany highlights, uh, the biggest issues that I heard were the high school, the high school, the high school, uh, traffic, 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 um, and then all the usual things about development and get attracting the right kind of businesses that we like versus the ones that we don't like and uh, sidewalks and uh, handicapped accessibility was kept coming up because the town is not all that accessible. Um, those were the, the, the hottest issues that I heard. I, I would agree with the I would agree with the traffic. I would agree with the walkability of the town. So sidewalks are a big deal, and getting just the right type of development. So those are the three three things I pull, pulled out of it. Pete, you want to add anything? Well, I just refer back to your comment. I think first everybody has to decide if you want to be a city or a town. Yeah, being a town is just it's wonderful out here, and and. If you can, everything we should do should enhance what we have and build off of the success that we've had with the town. Yeah. There's definitely improvements that could be double traffic and that type of thing, but uh, I think we should just build on what we have and uh, just keep going forward as a town and look at it that way. For, for me personally, which is really weird about traffic, I find traffic to be the worst Saturday mornings. Try, try to go to Rockies. I, I it's like it just floors me that that's the time of the week that's the busiest in this town. So, yeah. I just stay home. It's the summertime. I do my lawn in the morning on the weekend. <laughs> I don't go anywhere. <laughs> All right. So if there is no other items, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Seconded. Okay. Motion made. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. So if I roll call, Mr. Punderson. Aye. Mr. Torsha. Yes. Mr. Richards. Yes. Mr. Kingston. Yes. And I am a yes as well. Everyone have a good night. Have a good evening. Thank you. Good night.